And I want to... I want to bring some things out in the word, and we're going to prayer and praise tonight. Is that okay, Elijah? I'm changing it up. We're going to prayer and praise tonight. Because I believe we break through in prayer, and I believe we break through in praise. And it doesn't matter what the color of your skin is or what the color of my skin is. You know what? We are all kingdom people. We are new creations in Christ. And you're going to have to remind yourself that you're a king's kid. And that your family may not look like what you were born into, but your family looks like the person on your right and the person on your left and the person in front of you and the person behind you. Because when we all get to heaven, I love what Cheryl Salem said. She said, nobody's going to see the color of our skin. We're all going to see each other. And not one person's going to matter what color their skin is or where they came from. Because all that matters is that we are connected to our Father in heaven. And I just thought, yes, yes, that's what my soul's been longing for. And it says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, it says, Then if my people who are called by my name, this verse kept ringing in my spirit as we were having these awkward conversations. If I'm having them, I know you're having them. If my people who are called by my name, you call yourselves Christians. That means that there's a responsibility and there's an authority that is placed on you as children of the Most High God. You carry an anointing. And the Father is waiting to hear from you. The verse continues on. It says, if they will humble themselves, we just heard about a humble faith today by Barak. If you did not hear the message this morning, you need to go back and hear the message. I believe God is breaking something through at the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. I've never seen my husband do a Holy Ghost jig, but Pastor Dan went crazy. We all had our hankies. I mean, it was a moment today because God is speaking something into our church. He's pushing us to press in, to dig deeper, to go further with him, to lay aside all peripheral things and to launch into what it is he wants, but he needs his people to come to him humbly, to pray and to seek his face. That's all he's asking you say, oh, well, everybody says that. That's just so easy. Let's pray. Let's just pray about it. Listen, do not ever get in an attitude where prayer is not your number one weapon. Never underestimate the power of your prayer. Because that is the only way you are going to slice through the chaos and the confusion that the enemy brings. That's the only way that you're going to know how to fight against what it is you're coming up against. And as I got into prayer that night and I figured out what it was that I was coming against with my team and what it was that my city was feeling and what it was that our country was feeling and the Lord spoke a couple things to me. He said, number one, it's a spirit of division. And you can play into it, and you play into it as Christians, and you don't even know you are. Because you take sides that have nothing to do with God. You pick a side, but it has nothing to do with what God does. God doesn't take sides. He is the omniscient. He is the only. He is the one that we follow. He is the only identity you have once you said, I want Jesus in my heart. And God is challenging me. And he said, you need to break the spirit of division. As a rock church, you got to break that. Number two, he said, there's a spirit of fear. Because in my meeting, one of my girls said, she's black. And she said, I, I'm scared to have children. I don't want to have kids now. Because one in four will die before the age of 15. And I went, Phew. And I hated that statistic, and I hated the words that came out of her mouth. I wasn't mad at her. It probably sounded like I was, but I wasn't. I was mad at the spirit behind what she was saying because it was a spirit of fear. And when we give into a spirit of fear, then we are no longer allowing love to take over and allowing the king of kings to be what's coming out of our mouth. Faith is not being executed, but fear is being executed. And we're giving right into the enemy's plan. You're giving right into what he wants you to say. You're giving right into fear. Check your hearts right now. The last one he said was the spirit of murder. We've had 38 murders in San Bernardino on our soil in our city. And we think that's okay, Rock Church and World Outreach Center. We think that's okay. Some of them are your family members. Some of them, you know, the gang members that they that hit them up. Some of them, you know, what happened out there. You're not as innocent as you as I think you are. I know you have your hands in the. I know you know people, 
Because people here know each other. And guess what? You're not in that position to know these people for no reason. You're in that position to be a witness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you better know, and you better pray, and better fall on your knees for the people that you know. I also sat in that room, and they said to me that they knew the nine-year-old that was shot. And I said, what? A nine-year-old, a 12-year-old was just shot. Another person had come up to me and said, they know the story behind that. And I said to Dan, this is absolutely bizarre to me. We as Christians, as children of the Most High God, sit back and we let this happen. And you might say, she's an annoying woman. I wish she would shut up. She doesn't know what she's talking about. You know I do know what I'm talking about. Because there's a spirit behind these things. Today I was talking to somebody and something, hell is breaking through in their life and they were telling no one about it. They said, I've been told to be quiet. I've been told not to say anything. First thing I said to them is, that's wrong. You shouldn't. You need to put that out in the light so the enemy can't use it and isolate it and begin to bury it in your heart. You cannot hide these things. You need to bring these things into the light so that God can breathe on it and so that it can change. You see, we need to, as a rock church and world outreach center, be a light in this very, very, very dark world. God says, if you pray and seek my face, turn from your wicked ways. I know you're not all innocent in here. It's okay. I wasn't innocent either. But I have a savior and a redeemer who freed me from hell and from the sin that so entangled me, that so consumed me, that so trapped me and trapped me and trapped me and kept me down. There's a wickedness out there coming after you. The enemy enemy says he's out seeking whom he may devour. He's not just going to take you down. He's going to eat you up and spit you out. But you serve a God who loves you more than you know, who has left you the authority of the power of Jesus Christ, that any enemy that comes against you, against your family, against your marriage, against your finances, against your city, against your neighborhood, you, daughters and sons of the Most High God, we have to stand our ground. We have to hit our knees. We need to go to the throne room of God, and we need to say we are not okay with what is happening. But until you stir yourselves up, we walk into a church service like this and we just go, oh, it's good. You know, let's see if the worship team entertains me and if it's a song I like. Don't be that immature. It doesn't matter if they sing major old school. It doesn't matter if they sing totally young and free and who knows what the heck is going on and you don't understand the whoa, whoa, woes. It doesn't matter. Get a little bit more mature than that put our hearts at the throne room and at the feet of Jesus because it's not about what we sing. It's about the attitude of our heart behind it. I believe God wants to do something tonight. So what we're going to do is we're going to sing and we're going to press in and we're going to seek the face of God. Okay? Can you do that with me? And I love the last part of this verse. It says, I will hear them from heaven. I like picture God sitting on his throne and he's like, shh, do you hear that? Do you hear that? Do you hear that? The Rock Church, they're, they're, they're all together in unity. And wait a second, they're praying for other churches. And wait, wait a second, they're not putting up with the devil's plan that he's been playing and dangling things over them. Oh, look at, they just broke that spirit. Oh, I'm so proud of them. Oh, wait, let me get a little closer. Oh, let me get a little closer to them. Oh, let me pour my glory out on them. Oh, let me pour out my presence on them. Oh, let me rain down the Holy Ghost on them. Oh, Rock Church, we have to press in. We need to find what God has for our country. It is not time for us to be silent any longer. We have been politically correct for too long. We have been silenced to not speak the word of God because it's not cool. But you know what? That is never who we were created to be. We were never created to identify with the sin in our life. We were only created to identify with the God in heaven who created us, who formed us, who knew us in our mother's womb before you even were born. You 
at every person in this room and every person out on that street that needs to know the love of Christ, the prostitutes, the ones hanging on the poles tonight trying to pay the bills for their kids, the ones that are being sold into slavery right here, down here on our own streets. There are baby girls that are 12 years old being sold into slavery. And we're not okay with that. We should never be okay with that. And if you go, she's crazy, she's lost it. No, I'm passionate because I serve a big God. I serve a big God. We have to recognize our enemy. Listen, church, we got to recognize him. And that's what we did. We pointed out some of the demonic things that are going on. It says in Ephesians, for we do not wrestle with flesh and blood. Say, oh, they're killing each other. They're killing each other. Listen, it's deeper than that. It's demon against demon. Devil against devil, evil against evil. That's what's really happening. In the physical realm, we can see each other, but there is a whole spiritual realm happening around here. There's a whole move of things happening around us. And you go, what? This, I thought this was a nice little Baptist church. No, we're going to talk about some things tonight. We're going to talk about spiritual things. We're going to talk about speaking in tongues. We're going to talk about using our authority. We're going to talk about who we are in Christ. Because listen, in these end times, if you don't have the power of Jesus working through you, you're going to fail. You're going to fail. Your family's going to fail, and you will fail because God never left everything to us for us not to use it, for us to lay it down and never pick it up. Pull up your swords. Take out your shields. Throw on your armor, most high God, because we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. And this is what I want to do. Pastor Dan, come on up here. For we do, not, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. The Roman, he's seeking whom he may devour. Is that going to be you? Is that going to be you? Because you like to dabble in sin a little. You like to play around and just, oh, you know, I'll pray. And then you never really pray. You never really seek his face. You never get on your knees humbly. So what I want to do is I want to open up the altars right now. And I want you to go in the back if you have to get in the back. Get alone with God right now. Get on your knees. And let's repent right now for not seeking the face of God like we have. Come on, start moving, church. Come on. I'm pushing you to be Christians that you say you are. I'm not going to be sweetie, sweetie, lovey, lovey, sorry tonight. There's just something inside of me that says we have to press through these evil things that the God, that the God of heaven and earth already more than a conqueror fought. But he's asking for his church to show up, to humble ourselves, and to pray. So, Pastor Dan, will you pray against those three spirits we talked about, division, fear, and murder? And let's be in agreement. Right now, Father, as your church, we come together gathered in your name the name of Jesus. God, you gave us your authority here on the earth, Lord. You said that in your name that we will cast out demons. You said that we will tread upon scorpions and serpents, God. You said that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. And so right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we fight the spiritual war we do not fight it in the natural. We fight it in the spirit with our prayers. And we lift up our prayers to you, almighty God. And right now, we address the spiritual realm as spirit beings. And we come in the power and in the authority of Jesus Christ. And we come against these spirits. We come against the spirit of division that would try and divide and separate us and conquer us. And we command this foul spirit to flee in the name of Jesus. We resist you, you foul thing. We cast you out of this church. We cast you out of this city. We cast you out of our lives in the name of Jesus. We come against the spirit of fear. We declare the word of the Lord which says we do not have a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We cast that spirit out in the name of Jesus. We rebuke that spirit. In Jesus name. We rise up in faith, believing the word of God that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. That if the Lord be with me, whom then shall I be afraid of? That God is with me. Therefore, we will be strong and of good courage. And finally, we command this murderous spirit to cease 
and desist you. Take your hands off of the people of San Bernardino. We raise up the shield of faith and we cast those thoughts out in Jesus' name. We serve you. Notice, devil, you must get out of our city, get out of our state, get out of our nation, get out of our world in the name of Jesus. We command that spirit to stop taking lives and we set a hedge of protection around and about each and every one of our members in the spirit right now. We thank you, Lord. No weapon formed against us shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. And we give you the honor for it in Jesus' name. This is what we're going to do. We're going to pray and praise. So if you want to stay in a position that is humbled before the Lord, go ahead as we sing and we praise. And then we'll, we'll go to the next step. Because when you walk into the room, Everything changes And darkness starts to tremble At the light that you bring Cause when you walk into the room And every heart starts burning Cause nothing matters more Than just to sit here at your feet And worship you Oh yes we do worship ourselves before our God on behalf of our country, on behalf of our city, on behalf of our families. We broke the power and listen, I want to I want to tell you a little bit of who you are and the power that you carry. In Matthew 10:1 it says, and then he called his 12 disciples and he said unto him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Jesus went to hell when he died and he took the keys of sin and death and he left his power and his authority to us and he went and he sat at the right hand of the Father. When that happened, he left us authority over the principalities of darkness. And some of you have been living in fear and not walking in your authority because it freaks you out. And I get it, I totally get it. There was a time in my life where we were running shift and, and this guy, he he started to manifest. There was like a demon coming out of him. And I remember Pastor Dan was in the pulpit and I was just, they came and got me and I'm going, oh great. You know, I wasn't even a pastor at that point, but I knew my authority, but it was going to be challenged that night. And every time you're fighting with your husband and every time you're fighting for your kids and every time you're fighting on your job and every time there's that chaos and that confusion happening in your homes or in your lives or in your neighborhoods, recognize it. There's a spirit behind it. It's division. And you have to call it out. And I went in that room and I saw things I had never seen before. I mean, you want to talk about scary movies. We should have filmed that day. And I sat there and the first thing I did was I said, in the name of Jesus. You see, in the name of Jesus, all things have to bow to the name of Jesus. The devil knows his place and he knows that he has no authority over the name of Jesus. That thing cowered down right away. That thing calmed down right away. And then we started to pray and we started to intercede. And then I'll never forget it when my husband walked into the room, when the man of God with the anointing on him walked into that room, it flipped out. And let me tell you something. The only other time I saw it flip out was when I pulled my word of God out. I literally pulled the Bible out. And it said, no, not that. Not the name of Jesus and not the Bible. And I started reading Psalms and ooh, started to make them mad. And you know what? We just casted that thing and we said, in the name of Jesus, flee, be gone. And that guy was delivered. I don't know what happened to him. We tried to 
keep him, there's a, there's, the Bible says that if you don't keep your house clean after you've been delivered, that the enemy will go and get seven more and bring them back. You gotta fill yourself up with the word. You gotta fill yourself up with the Holy Spirit. You gotta fill yourself up with the things of God. Now, if you're sitting in this room going, oh, I might, I don't know if I'm demon possessed, but I'm, I'm oppressed. There are some things going on, but maybe I'm possessed. If you have asked Jesus to come into your heart and be the Lord and savior of your life and you have served him, you cannot be possessed. Just, that's just for free, just so you understand that simple tidbit there. But there's a lot of oppression over our city. There's a spirit of poverty on our city. There's a spirit, and it consumes us, and it, and it entangles us, and we get in fear over money, we get in fear over where we're gonna, we get in fear over these things, and God says, wait a second, I've given you authority, I've left this to you. What are you doing getting in fear over it? You need to get in faith over it. You need to use your authority, daughter and son of the most high God. Luke 10, it says, behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the end and nothing by any means shall hurt you. We're playing games with things we shouldn't play games with. You're watching scary movies. You shouldn't be watching. You're entertaining the enemy instead of entertaining the Holy Spirit. I'm calling it out, you guys, because we just think we're all okay. We wonder why there's demonic activity in our marriage. We wonder why there's demonic things happening in our world. We wonder why people can kill each other for no reason. Well, because they're demonically influenced. I believe those people are possessed. Listen to me. There's a spiritual world here, but we have authority over it. And I went to bed that night after all that happened, and I was scared. I mean, the lights were out, and I was kind of like, ugh, you know. And this is what the Lord told me. He said, you have had this, daughter. It's been a spirit of fear ever since you were a little girl. And you better confront it. And I said, well, how do I do that? And he said, you better know who you are, number one. And you already know that, so you just need to walk in it. I said, okay, well, what do I do? He said, get up. I got up out of bed. Dan was sleeping. The kids were sleeping. And we had this hallway. And I could feel something was there, but I couldn't see it, but I knew it was there. I got up, and I, I looked down the hallway, and he said, now tell it where to go and tell it why. And I said, you spirit of fear, you will no longer torment me. You will no longer torment my daughter because it was totally attacking my daughter. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I command you right now to flee. Go back to hell where you came from. You are not allowed to return. And do you know what happened? I never slept so good ever in my whole entire life. I finally had sleep for the first time when I was from a little girl. I finally had a full night's sleep. You know what else happened? My daughter slept through the night again. And then now it's a familiar spirit to me because I can recognize it. And it'll try and come back. And you know what I do right away? Oh, no, spirit of fear, you got to go. You don't get to stay. And you know what? I don't got to play games with it. I don't have to spend hours rebuking it. You know why? Because I'm a daughter of the Most High God, and it's scared of me. I'm not scared of it. And that's where you need to get yourself to. Because you have authority over principalities of darkness, over the things that you do not see in the spiritual realm. They are afraid of the God within you. They are afraid of what God has and the power that you carry because he left it to us when he went to hell and he went and sat at the right hand of the heavenly father. So this is what we're going to do. Think about where you've been tormented in your life. Has your marriage been on the rocks and you can't figure out why you just can't get along? Why is there always contention? Why? Maybe your finances have been locked up and you just have had this mentality that you can't get past. And maybe you just need to break that. Maybe you've been dealing with a homosexual spirit. And it's something you don't want to be a part of. It's not something you want, but you want to be closer to God. And you want to run after God full heartedly. And you don't want to walk in sin any longer, but you want to run after the things of God. But this thing just keeps tormenting you. To break that spirit off of you. I'm not going to be popular for that. that. That one you probably want to persecute me for, but I don't care. That man that, I deli that we delivered that night, that was his issue. I watched it. I saw it with my own eyes. It was evil and it took his life all his childhood. Maybe you're sitting here and you're addicted to pornography and you don't understand why that thing has a hold on you. You don't understand why you just can't stop looking. You don't understand. 
It's a spirit. You got to break it off. You got to you got to just act in the name of Jesus and get in faith over it and say, "I will not and it will not have control over me any longer." We need to ask God for a miracle for deliverance tonight because I believe that God wants to break some things off of you. Maybe you don't you're not sound in your mind. You're everywhere. Maybe you're depressed. Spirit of depression has to go tonight. I believe God wants to break some yokes off people, things that have been generational for generation after generation. And God says, stop living with these things. Stop, sons and daughters. I love you too much for you to live like this. I gave too much for you to stay in your sin. I gave too much for you to not live completely and fully and full of life. So tonight we're going to break some things off. Tonight, you've been dealing with some sickness that you do not know even where to start. You just, it consumes you. You never feel good. You never know where, where, what to do next. You don't know how to eat properly. You're just having a hard time physically. God wants to heal you tonight. And we're gonna break off that spirit of infirmity off of you. But I'm not gonna do it. You are. And let me tell you why. Because you're a son and you're a daughter of the Most High God. And you have authority. And you, just like anyone else, can pray over yourself and you can cast those things off and you don't have to continue to let them live in your world or in your life. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to pray. And I'm going to have you stand up. Everybody stand up. And if you're believing God for something and you just don't know what is happening, you're just constantly frustrated. Did you ever think that maybe you're spiritually under attack? that there's a spiritual attack happening and you don't know what it is. Ask the Holy Spirit right now, what is it that I'm dealing with, Holy Spirit? What is it that I'm feeling? Why am I constantly mad all the time? Maybe you're mad all the time. God says, I've never called you to live mad all the time. You should enjoy life. He's our joy in times of trouble. Maybe you're addicted to drugs. Maybe you're addicted to prescription medicine. Listen to me. That's a very very real thing and it's a hard thing to break but I believe if you want freedom from it God is here tonight and he will break you from it so we have to have an attitude of faith because we have authority over these demonic things so this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna pray and I want you guys to close your your eyes and approach the throne room Cheryl Salem said this on Thursday so I'm gonna tell you like this while your eyes are closed you're at the throne room of God It's you and him. And you can't go further in your life until you close the door to your past. So in this room that you're in, picture yourself in a room and there's doors all around you. Turn around and shut the back door because the past is no longer to define your future. Now, maybe you always have mama telling you what to do. Shut that door, you don't need to hear those voices anymore. Maybe you have a husband or a wife or a boss or somebody always talking talking to you. Shut those doors around you and keep it silent. Now you are in your throne room. You are with God right now. And now let's approach the throne. Dear Father God, we come to you as your children. And Lord, there are strongholds that have held us down and weighed us down. And right now, in the name of Jesus, we lift up these addictions, we lift up these sicknesses, we lift up these um, depression, we lift up cancer, we lift up marriages that are broken, that have been fighting, we lift up division, and we break it right now in the name of Jesus. And devil, we command you right now to come off of their minds, off of their bodies, off of their families, and we say you have no place in their life any longer. Now, this is what I want you to do. You're going to have to pray. And I love Brother Hagin. He said this when he was alive, and that man knew a whole other side of heaven. And he said, this is what he said. He said, when you command the devil to flee, you tell him to flee. He hates that word. And he said, you send him back to hell where he came from so he can't roam around and continue to cause chaos in your life. This is what I want you to do. We're going to play some music. You might be embarrassed to say, well, in the name of Jesus, break off sexual addiction. I don't care. Do not be embarrassed. There is no shame here. This is what we're going to do. I want you to raise your hands. 
I want you to lift up what it is that has been consuming your heart and your lives, whether it's anger, whether it's addiction, whether it's frustration, whether it's depression, whatever it is. And I want you to give it to God right now. And you just pray in the spirit and you begin to break it off. Say, in the name of Jesus, devil, I take my authority as a child of God. And you will no longer consume my life. I break off your assignments. And I command you right now to flee. Go back to hell where you came from. And do not return. We break your plans. We are free in our mind. We are free in our body. We are going to live for God. We're going to serve the Lord with all of our hearts. We break every generational curse that has been passed down from one generation to the next. And tonight, it stops. My children will serve the Lord. My family will serve the Lord. And we serve you notice, enemy. You have no place. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. This is kind of a little teaching lesson, okay? I'm showing you how to pray this off because what's going to happen is you're going to get alone and the enemy's going to come and attack. And you go, oh no, I don't want that to happen. Listen, do not be afraid. Hello, remember? I love this story, Smith Wigglesworth. He was such a man of God. And he, he like, he, man, this man was crazy. He like raised people from the dead. He just like, did, go back and get some of his books. He was definitely not a personality though to be around, they said. <laughs> said he was not a very nice man. But he did, man. He would just come up to you and he would just hit you. And all of a sudden tumors would fall off people's bodies. I mean, he had such a healing ministry. And I remember this story about him. And he said that he was just wrestling in the middle of the night. Have you ever just wrestled and you can't go to sleep at night? And he said he just felt like there was something spiritual there and he didn't know what it was. And he woke up in the middle of the night and he said, oh, it's just you. And it was literally Satan himself at the end of his bed. And he said, I'm going back to bed. And he rolled over and went back to sleep because he knew he couldn't touch him. He knew he had no place over him. He knew his authority was greater than what. So listen, let's remember that we have the greater one living within us. And that what we see around us, it's hate and it's violence, and it's evil. And people are paying a price because the enemy is seeking whom he may devour. But you, O oh daughters and sons of the Most High God, have power within you. This is the last one, hold your ground. Hold your ground. When you're in battle and the enemy's coming at you, but you've, you've secured your territory, are you gonna let him pass you? Oh, heck no, right? You are not going to let him pass. You're not going to let him take any more ground. You've already taken that ground back from him, right? So you're going to hold your ground. How do you hold your ground? You resist the devil. You go, that's just so simple. No, you know it's really not, actually, because we entertain him way too much. It's actually simple to think, but it's not easy to do. Remember, because you have to recognize it first, and you have to cast it off. You're going to have to do that over and over and over again. That spirit of fear always tries to come back and mess with me, but I'm like, Psh, please, go away. Go back to hell where he came from. You're going to ruin my day. And listen, that's the kind of confidence I want you all to understand you can have. And so it says, ah, all my notes. It says in James 4, 7, therefore submit to God. You don't submit to man. You don't submit to what the world says. The world's going to tell us a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo. Right is wrong and wrong is right. And none of it makes any sense according to the word of God. So you're going to get really confused. You're not going to know where to stand. So this is what you do. You submit to God and the word of God about any circumstance that we're facing. Our country's in a very hard place right now. What does the word say about it? It says to love. What is our church going to do? We're going to stay in love. We're going to stay in faith. And we're going to stay in unity. That's what the word says. That's what we're going to do. That's our mission. And we're going to hold our ground on it. Listen, hold your ground. It says resist the devil and he will flee. He's going to come knock at your door and try and bug you. But you know, you say, ah, oh, in the name of Jesus, I resist you. You're not going to take any more ground. You're not going to take any more ground. You're not going to take my kids. You're not going to take my joy. You're not going to steal my heart again. You're not going to give me the wrong path to walk down. I will not receive that path. This is what I want you to do. I want you guys to find 
a group of people, you go, oh man, she wants us to actually talk to each other. Yes, because look around you. This are all your family members that you just don't know yet. And I want all of you to gather around and, and hold some hands. Get in some groups. Get in some groups. I know some of you will be disobedient in the way back, but try and not be and get together. Even if you don't know them. Because there's power in unity. There's power in unity. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to be in agreement. All right? We're going to hold our ground. Dear Father God, we come before you. And we ask right now in the name of Jesus as we hold hands with each other. And as we stand in faith together in unity. Lord, that there would be no more killings in our country, that there would be no more attacks on our soil. And Lord, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that there would be no more assignments placed on our police officers or on any, any innocent victims towards police. And Lord, we ask right now that no terrorist will walk into any building and blow anyone up or run anyone over or shoot anyone. But whatever their plan is, Lord, we break it right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we just serve you notice, devil. We are resisting your plans. We are resisting you. And we say in the name of Jesus, flee off of our country. And we will take our country back for the kingdom of God. And right now, in the name of Jesus, pray over each other really quick. On the right-hand side, pray a blessing on the person on the right-hand side of you. Pray a blessing on them. Not a long prayer, but in the name of Jesus, be blessed. Now pray a blessing on the left side. Pray a blessing on the left side. Now everybody look up at each other. Put a big smile on your face. Smile at each other. And say thank you for praying with me tonight. For believing with me tonight. For being my new family member. Now look up here everybody. We're gonna do one more thing. Because I believe that God wants us to do this last thing. Do you mind? We okay on time? I can't even see the clock. Am I okay, Pastor Dan? I got six minutes. All right. I'm going to fill that six minutes. Okay. First Timothy 2, 1 Timothy 2.1. It says, I urge you first of all to pray for all people, which we just did, right? We prayed for our country. We prayed for our families. We prayed for ourselves. We prayed for everybody, right? Okay. Now we're going to move on to the next part of this. Ask God to help them. Intercede on their behalf. Listen, if you ever are just randomly thinking about someone... That's not just because, like, oh, I was just thinking about you the other day. I want you to start changing that thought and go, I'm going to start praying for you the other day. Because the Holy Spirit put them on your heart so that you will pray for them. If you don't know what to pray, you just say, God, I just pray that you bless their day, that whatever's going on in their life, Lord, that you would intervene and that you would protect them. And, Lord, that you guard their heart and their mind so that they would serve you with all of their heart. You see, that's how you pray for them, okay? So that's interceding on behalf of somebody else. And give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live, listen to this, a peaceful and quiet life marked by goodness and dignity. Our country is at a point where we have to pray for the leadership. Now, I've heard time and time again, listen, they, they need to, um, you know, we need to get a Christian in office. Well, that would be just wonderful. But that is probably not likely to happen. And you go, what? Listen, God can use a jackass in the Bible to speak to his prophets. Then he can use anyone in the White House and he can influence them because we, the church, are praying that God would influence him and do what he needs to do. Or her, I guess. Whoever it is that will end up being in the White House. But right now, Obama is in the White House, so we'll pray for him. But our Senate is changing. The government systems are changing. Things are changing. Dan just went to a meeting where the Christian colleges now have to let the, what is it, the transgender and the homosexual things be taught and allowed in the bathrooms and all of that if they want to have government funding. So like, let's say you got a government loan and you wanted to go to a Christian college, that Christian college couldn't accept you unless they accepted their, the, you know, the country's beliefs on those things. But then, really, are we Christian college at that point? 
So we need to pray because our own beliefs as Christians are being taken away from us. And we have sat idle way too long. And we need to stand for righteousness. And I believe God says that if we pray for the leadership and the authority, that we will be influenced. He will guide and guard and protect us. And listen to this. If we are asked to pray for the authority of our country, okay, then what that means is that God is going to hear our prayer and he will heal our land. Now, if we do not commit to pray for the authority and for our country, then we are going to have to answer for it when we get to heaven. Because God is asking his people to cry out on behalf of those things that are unrighteous. And no matter who's in office and what's happening, God can influence them in any way he needs to. But he just needs the Christian to go to the throne room, get in our inner room like we just talked about, get on our knees. We need to thank and petition the Lord for those people in office. And then we need to ask God to do what he needs to do. And so we're going to pray for our president. We're going to pray for the Senate. We're going to pray for the Congress. And then we're going to pray for the next leadership that's coming into office because I have no idea what is happening. It's, uh, it's chaos and it's confusion. But you know what? God is a God of order. And God is the one that makes the crooked ways straight. And so we need to pray that those things are what happens in office. Can you guys agree with me in this? So I don't care if you're Democrat or Republican. It does not matter. What matters is that you're Christian and that you're kingdom's kid. So I'm, ta- I'm teaching you how to be a kingdom's kid, not what you used to identify with, okay? Remember, we now identify with what God identifies with. And so, dear God, we come before you as your body. And Lord, we lift up President Obama. And as he's had these, these last times in office, Lord, and there are major things hitting our country. Lord, we ask that you would bring wisdom to this man. And, Lord, that he would hear from heaven. Lord, I ask that you would show up in his inner office. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that he would have visions and dreams and that he would not be able to get away from your plan, God, for our country. And, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would inspire him and that you speak to him and that you move through him in a way that he never knew that he could be used. And, Lord, we ask right now that the Senate and the Congress, Lord, that these people would be influenced for your name namesake and not even know it. Lord, I pray, God, that they would stand on morals, God. Lord, that they would protect the rights of Christianity, Lord. We ask that you go before us, and Lord, that our rights would not be taken away. But Lord, that we'd be able to serve you. And Lord, we'd be able to speak about what your word says without being afraid that we're going to be punished for it. And Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you go before our country and you protect our country, Lord. God, we lift up every military soldier, God. And, Lord, we lift up every person in combat and in battle. And, Lord, we ask right now over the mindset of these people, God, the things they see, the things they hear, the things they're trained in. Oh, God, it messes with their heart. And, God, they see things they should never see. And, Lord, I ask right now, God, for intervention. Lord, that the Christians in the military would stand up. And, Lord, that they would be a voice to the people around them. Lord, that the presence of God would fall in their camps. Lord, that the presence of God would fall on their training. And Lord, that their hearts would be renewed and that they would long for you, O Holy Spirit. And God, we ask that there are more than 10 in our nation that would serve you. And that, God, you would have mercy on our nation. Because our nation has turned so ungodly. And God, we ask as your Christians and as your church and as your kids, that you go before us, that you make the crooked path straight. And Lord, that you would open doors that only you can open. And Lord, that you close those doors that need to be closed. And Lord, any plans that are laid out, that God, they would be your plans and no longer a man's plans, but God, they'd be your plans. And Lord, we thank you, God, that you would just make a way when we don't know where it could come from, God, it comes from you. Our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And so, Lord, we approach your throne tonight and we ask on behalf of the United States of America that you would heal our land. And Lord, that you would restore everything back that the enemy has stolen. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You can go back to your seats. I know that was different tonight. Is that okay? I'm a little supernatural. I grew up Pentecostal. I grew up watching legs grow out of people and watching demons cast it out of people. And you can't tell me that stuff isn't real. It's real. 
I remember I met Dan, and he was came out of an evangelical church, and we were talking about stuff, and whoo, I was on fire, and I didn't even know what I was talking about, and he was just like, okay, slow it down there, lady, like, geez, but there is just this something inside of me that when you know and you've tasted and you've seen the power of God, there's no denying it. There's no denying it. When he's healed you, nobody can tell you he hasn't, right? When, you, when he's restored your marriage, when it was like in the rocks, nobody could take that from you because you're now healed, right? And I believe God wants to heal you tonight. I believe he did heal you tonight. And so if you believed God for something supernatural tonight, I want you to not be in fear over it, but I want you to be in faith over it and ask the Lord to continue to manifest that in your life, okay? But I want to talk to some of you tonight and you go, whoa, 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 that was a little supernatural, woo-woo, weird. You know I'm sure somebody brought you tonight and they're going, oh, great, thanks, Pastor Jess. You know, like, you had to be odd. And first of all, you're a woman. And then second of all, like, you know, you're, like, saying kooky things about demons and stuff. But, you know, you guys watch zombie movies and you don't think that's weird. And you watch, like, vampire movies and we all think Twilight's so amazing. Where do you think it all comes from? These people are demonically influenced. Let's not be foolish. But let's talk about the light side. Oh, but there are angels guarding and surrounding us, protecting us. There are angels that are making crooked ways straight. There are angels on assignment working on your behalf for you and your family. Sometimes the church doesn't want to talk about those things. It's not popular, but it's real. And tonight, some of you walked in this room and you don't know what's happening tomorrow. You're not promised tomorrow. Tomorrow, you have no idea that when you wake up, When you get in your car to go to work, if you're going to make it to work or not. The people in France thought they were just going to watch a fireworks show. And they lost their lives. We are not promised tomorrow. And there's a God in heaven who died on a cross so that your sins could be wiped away. Because he loved you so intimately and so passionately. And because he wants to be reconnected with you. Because when when you were born into this world, he created you. And he loves you and he longs for you. And you say, okay, well, I want to know this God that you're talking about, but I've never asked him to come into my heart and be the Lord and Savior of my life. Well, tonight I'm going to give you an opportunity. You don't get saved. You don't get to be with Jesus for the rest of your life. You don't get to go to heaven. It's not an insurance policy. This is a relationship with God. This is not what Hollywood wants to mock about being born again and those Christians and da-da-da-da-da. Listen to me. This is real. These are real relationships. He's a real God. He's one who created heaven and earth. And he loves you so intimately and so passionately. He wants to make sure that you have an opportunity to know who he is tonight. So I'm going to ask you a couple questions. I want you to examine your heart. I want you to check yourself out and say, hmm, I don't know if I'm there. Have you ever asked Jesus to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life? You say, how do I do that? I pray a prayer. We pray a prayer and you ask him to be Lord and Savior of your life. And you are then born again and you become a new creation in Christ. If you say, no, I have never done that. I'm talking to you tonight. Maybe you say, well, you know, I remember when I was a kid, I went to camp and whoo, God just like filled me up. And then I was serving God and then I just kind of like weighed away from God. I kind of did more of my own thing instead of God's thing. And I never really continued serving God. Or I went to a harvest crusade and I got saved, but I never followed it up. Or I actually came to the Rock Church like 10 years ago and then I never really followed it up. I just continued living the way I wanted to live. I'm talking to you tonight. You say, well, gosh, Pastor Jess, I hope, I hope I would make it to heaven. I hope I would get there. Well, we can't hope our way into heaven. I really wish we could, but we can't. It doesn't work that way. God says that you confess me before man and I'll confess you before my father. But if you deny me before man, I will deny you before my father. He takes salvation. He takes being born again very seriously because it's a commitment and it's a covenant. It's a relationship with him. It's not just something we do because it's a religious act, but it's something we do because we long to be in his presence. We long to be healed. We long to be free from sin and death that he has so given to us freely. All we have to do is say, yes, God, we want that. We want you in our hearts. We want to receive you. So tonight... 
is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go on the count of three. One, two, three. I'm going to clap my hands like that. And I want you to raise your hand if you have never asked Jesus to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life. Maybe if you've hoped your way, hoping, wondering, maybe, I don't know. Well, tonight, make sure. I want you to raise your hand too. Maybe you've been walking the fence. You've been kind of doing more of your thing instead of God's thing. Then I'm talking to you tonight. Make sure. Don't play games with the Lord. Don't be lukewarm. God says you're either hot or you're cold, but if you're lukewarm, I will vomit you from my mouth. He says that in Revelation. He's very serious about our relationship with his children because he gave everything for it. He gave everything for you, and he just wants to be with you. So this is what we're going to do. When you raise your hand, you're going to raise your hand. I'm going to see it. And then we're going to pray together, and we're going to ask Jesus to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life. This is a very safe place. Everybody in this room loves you. Everybody in this room is cheering for you. They're praying for you right now. You didn't even know that, did you? you got a whole family praying for you already. So this should not be something you should be afraid of. It should be something you, yes, please, I need to get right with the Lord. I need to know who this Jesus is. I want to do this. So on the count of three, one, two, three, raise your hands. I see your hand, I see your hand, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I see your hands, you can put them down if I saw them. Eleven. Anybody else? Eleven. Twelve, I see your hand. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody in the family rooms that I can't see back there? No? Anybody over here on this side? I don't want to miss anyone. All right, well, this is what we're going to do. 12 people. It's awesome. This is what we're going to do. We're all going to stand with you, and I want you to grab your purse, your sweater, your Bible. Bring a friend. If there's someone around you that raised their hand and they're not coming, go ahead and come up with them to Rock Church. Bless them. Be their friend. And let's grab someone. Let's come forward so I can meet you and so we can pray together. Because you don't get saved just by raising your hand. So come on forward. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one our hearts adore. How are you going to stand right here? Oh, Jesus. Hello. Jesus, we love you. Come on over here. Hi, how are you? Oh, how we love you. This is the best decision of your life. It's a new beginning. Those tears are tears of a new, a new life. You're a new creation in Christ. God bless you. God bless you. This is what we're going to do. We don't get saved. Is it okay if we pray with them? We don't get saved just by coming forward or raising our hand. You get saved by praying a prayer, okay? So this is what we're going to do. Come on up, come on up. All are welcome. So what we're going to do, I'm going to pray, and you're going to repeat the prayer after me. Now listen, if you miss a word, it's not about the word. It's about your heart. God hears our heart, okay? So he's not that judgmental, okay? He, he's okay if you skip a word or two. But what he does here is he hears your heart. So I'm going to pray a prayer. You're going to repeat it after me. In fact, we're all going to pray it with you so you're not alone, okay? And then after that, we're going to just celebrate. Because did you know that heaven celebrates when one person enters into the kingdom of God? Now, can you imagine all the angels going crazy right now? Because all of you are like asking Jesus to come to your house. Heaven is partying for you right now. Okay? So this is what we're going to do. We're going to pray with you. So everybody bow your head and close your eyes. And repeat after me. Dear Father God, I come before you. And Lord, I commit my heart to you tonight. And I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. And come into my heart. And be the Lord and Savior of my life. Lord, fill me tonight. Change me tonight. Make me a new creation in you tonight. Fill me, Holy Spirit. Teach me your ways. Thank you, God, for forgiveness, for freedom, and for love. Dear Father God, tonight's the night that I'm on my way to heaven, and I'm leaving hell behind. Thank you, Father God, for coming into my heart and being the Lord and Savior of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Did you know that we're partying afterwards?
it's all for you guys. Like you get corn and what's it called, Dan? Like corn and Parmesan cheese. I'm so white. What is it called? Pen, pen, what is it? Elote. Elote. There you go, elote. We're going to have elote for you when you're done, okay? So <laughs> it's going to be so good. I can't wait to go out and eat it right now. So what you're going to do is you're going to go with Pastor Joel first. He's going to give you some free information. We give away friends here at The Rock. Isn't that cool? So somebody will sit with you and teach you about how to become a new Christian because, listen, when you have a baby, you don't leave them in the hospital, right, to fend for themselves. No, you're a new Christian, right? So you need to know what to do. You need to know why and what's next and how does this happen. And so we give away people that are friends here that have been trained and that will love you, that are safe, and they will come and meet with you. And Pastor Joel will introduce that to you. So if you go with him afterwards, go back out. Come say hi to me or my husband or one of the pastors here on staff while you're out there. And let's eat some pelote. Yes, together. <laughs> right on.